so many ideas. And you know, I've lived here in Vermont for 16 years now. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. And so engagement with the, the natural world, with state and national parks, um, is something that you know, has always been kind of um, uh, on the periphery. You know, I spent one winter skiing up in the Pacific Northwest. I have to admit, I've never skied on a, on a Vermont ski slope, though my nine-year-old son started skiing at Bromley this year. And, and Bromley was one of the um, original ski areas that was um, designed by the um, Civilian Conservation Corps in the 1930s, which you know, we'll get into that story, but it's a, a big part of how the Vermont State Park system um, came to be. Um, and so, you know, you go down to New York City and you see advertisements on the subway for Stratton Mountain. Vermont in, in the 21st century is so deeply embedded in the idea of um, four season recreation and ac accessibility to preserved landscapes. Um, and so that's what this exhibition tells, is that story of um, you know, how Vermont went from in the mid 19th century, you know, where we had essentially denuded the landscape um, of trees, um, um, to now um, nearly you know, 150 plus years later, um, to being kind of synonymous with um, preservation, conservation, and recreation within the, those preserved um, sites. As you read a lot of the exhibition labels, you can learn the name for Mount Mansfield in Abenaki, or um, um, Campbell's Hump, or um, Mount Escutney, these sites um, that are now managed by the Vermont State's Park System. Um, I also included a wonderful poem by Joseph Bruchak, who is an Abenaki writer, poet, and storyteller. Um, and it talks about this issue, and um, it it's, it's a really kind of addresses you know, indigenous relationship to the landscape. And so I'll just read it. It says, I know the names on this land have been changed, printed on maps made by those who claim their ownership. Some say nothing survives, but the wind still sings the same song on our breath. The hilltop trees still bend like dancers and ceremonies that never ended. And the little pines, tutuas, tutuas, lift up, protected from the weight of snow by the hand held out arms of their elders. Um, so I think it's really important to acknowledge the um, long-time relationship to the landscape here in Vermont by the original indigenous people who made this their home. And the Long Trail was first conceived by James P. Taylor in 1909. Um, and in fact, it, it pre predated um, the Appalachian Trail by a good um, 10 years. You know, of course, the Appalachian Trail now um, coincides with the Long Trail on its southern, southern portion. Um, but it was really the, the nation's first long distance hiking trail. He conceived it in 1909. Um, they then established the Green Mountain Club up in Burlington in 1910 um, and started the process of raising the funds and, make, and, and kind of scouting out and marking the trail and developing it all the way from the Massachusetts Vermont border up to the Canadian border. And there were a number of um, Benningtonians who were involved in that early process. Um, um, and so a lot of this case tells the story of, of, of locals who were involved as well as others. Um, and I said earlier, um, not all of you were here when I first gave the introduction, you know, an exhibition is the work of many hands. And I want to uh, acknowledge Alexa Curran, um, who was a field work term study for me um, this last winter um, and did a lot of the research and work um, on the long trail portion of this exhibition. And um, I encourage you, I mentioned the QR code accessing all of the Abenaki names um, that Dan was able to compile as he was working on his painting. Um, anybody with a smartphone, you, have, you, can, you can open up a QR reader, um, point it at a label with a QR code, click on it, and the entire album is digitized and accessible so that you can look at, you can basically join them on their adventure from the Massachusetts border all the way up to the Canadian border. Um, and what it would have been like hiking the Long Trail before it really even became the Long Trail in 1910. Um, and then on the right is the story of um, Clyde Blackwell. Um, Clyde Blackwell was a black man. Um, he was the head porter at Equinox Hotel, um, which um, the irony is that the Equinox didn't accept black people. Um, you know, there's a famous story that um, um, Louis Armstrong came to play um, at the Southern Vermont Art Center in 1957, and he was turned away from the Equinox Hotel. Well, Clyde Blackwell worked there as, a, as a, the head doorman and porter um, for close to 40 years in the early, um, the first half of the, the 20th century. Um, and he advertised in the Negro Motor Green Book. The Green Book, it's, it's been in popular culture quite a bit um, of late. 
Um, it was a book that was a, a, um, first published in the 1930s. Um, and it, it basically um, was a guidebook for African American travelers. Um, because though state parks are intended to be accessible to all, um, of course in the mid 20th century when segregationism and racism was still so predominant, how do you get from New York City to, to have good state forest um, if you can't stay places? And so um, Clyde Blackwell, um, he actually accepted people into his own home um, and advertised, which was just down the street from the Equinox Hotel, ironically, where he worked, which wouldn't accept black people. Um, um, and he advertised. And so you see a reproduction of the 1947 Green Book, which is ad advertisement for other listings here in the state of Vermont, in Burlington, Manchester, Rutland, and Northfield. And again, we've created a wonderful QR code which links to a silent film showing Black Blackwell with his daughter and other friends at Hapgood State Forest. It's a wonderful silent film that you can access online um, and you can access it directly through that QR code. Um, so again, I really encourage you to access those, those various kind of extra points of, of kind of, um, um, whether they be video or, or um, um, kind of background um, sound um, to kind of build up the stories that this exhibition tells. CAT TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support CAT TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station.